All right, welcome to Before You Say I Do. My name is Chris Carter, and you know this is that show that helps you navigate all the questions and important discussions that one needs to have before walking down the aisle. Well, if you're watching us, this is City TV, and if you're listening, it's 97.3 City FM. We have our expert in the house with us, and of course, it's a brand new topic. It's always a brand new topic every day, and we will take a quick break, and when we come back, we will dive right into the topic, and I will introduce my guest. All right, we'll be back. Welcome. It's Before You Say I Do. And like I said, it's a brand new topic. And obviously, we have our expert in the house with us that is going to be delving into this topic with us. So the topic for today is entering marriage with a child. Entering marriage with a child. And I have this big green on my face from right to left because I... It kind of like hits close to home. I understand that. So yeah. And obviously our expert is here with us and he is no other person than Reverend Bernie Osei-Dua who is a counselor and a coach. Hi Reverend. Hi, How are you? I'm cool. How about you? I am okay and excited <laughs> at the same time because this conversation actually hits close to home. Really? Yes, because like I feel like um, Whatever this conversation is going to be, I'm going to I'm going to be like the ambassador for people that have children and are not yet married that might want to get married someday, all right? Because I have a kid and I'm not yet married. And I'm thinking about the dynamics and everything. So yeah, I think it's a very good topic for me, and I'm going to be presenting us well and asking all the questions that we need to be asked. All right. So, how does a dynamic? Um, I don't know how does a child actually change the dynamic of um, marriage? or a new marriage. Okay, so who is bringing the child matters in here. Mm -hmm. Because this hits home, mm -hmm. let me try and start from your premise. Right. So if a lady is bringing a child mm -hmm. into a marriage, um, there are a lot of complications for the guy. Right. Um, legally, any child that a, a woman brings into a marriage, mm -hmm. the guy has no advantage. Right. There are so many disadvantages for the guy mm -hmm. if they get into it. So, for example, if you're getting married to a woman that already has a child, you live together for 10 years, you bond with the child, mm -hmm. you have a lot of, you know, things you do with this child that really knits you together. God forbid, but should it come to the point of breakup, mm -hmm. when you're divorcing, the guy has no legal right to that child. To that child. Mm -hmm. This is someone he might have invested in, paid the fees. I mean, that's everything that is required of a dad. So the question is, why would a child, sorry, why would a man want to get married to um, a woman with a child? Mm -hmm. These realities are the things they factor. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, they don't just lose you, mm -hmm. but they also lose the right, child. Right. So, for the guy, it's double loss. Mm -hmm. And that is why if a woman has a child and getting into another you know, relationship or marriage, there are a lot of very critical and intricate things mm -hmm. that she must really be paying attention to. If the guy is very welcoming and homely and would accept this child as his own, you've won a jackpot. Because mm -hmm. then you know that you found someone who can give to this child a fatherly love that he or she does mm -hmm. not have. And it's very important that if you carry it and you're going into it, you look at those dynamics. Now, from the side of the woman, when the man is the one bringing it in, now, many times, there are a bit of complications in there. Yeah. Because a lot of women, and this is statistically proven, a lot of women find it difficult to accept a child that usually is not theirs. Not all. Mm -hmm. There are many women who love it. There are people who go even the extra mile to take other people's kids mm -hmm. into their home and nurture them, take good, very good care of them. Today, the dynamics are a bit different. Why? So a lot of people struggle. I, I think it's been 
it, it's like putting your hand into a fire, you got burned. Mm -hmm. And over the period, a lot of women sharing their stories, so many women feel like, you know what, this is not in for me. Plus, immediately I accept this, the baby mama is going to show up, you know, not once, not twice, but throughout the journey of mm -hmm. our marriage, because of this child, the baby mama is going to show up. And if you don't have that thick skin to be able to handle the complications that comes with it, you will have to deal with it all your life. And if you're not careful, it will be right in your face that you will never enjoy the marriage as intended. All right, so are we saying that don't get married to people with kids? Never. Okay. That's not what we're saying. Right. I think that the question was, uh, you know, how how people get into it, yeah. what they, they look at, yeah. and what the realities are for mm -hmm. them. Of course, there is hope. You know, at least, you know, um, Jesus went into um, a marriage with a mother, you know, that... <laughs> <laughs> so there is hope. You know? <laughs> All right, now, let's talk about um, background. Um, is it a background thing for, let's say, women to have problems with um, maybe a man that has a child? Would you say it's a background thing for them not to be accepting sometimes? If you say background, um, I wouldn't want to assume in those generics mm -hmm. and rhetoric. I, I would really like to say on the individual level, mm -hmm. their understanding to life mm -hmm. To understand that, you know, um, this man might have gone through something for which he walks away. Mm -hmm. Recently, someone shared a video with me um, about a guy who um, is actually dating uh, this lady. They didn't live together. The, um, she, the, the guy has a baby mama um, and a, a beautiful girl child. Unfortunately, that morning, the mother of this child passed on mm -hmm. in a car accident. So, you know, of course, when called for, you know, by the police, they went to the hospital, yeah. put the body in the morgue, and then brought this child home. Now, it's not like this girlfriend does not know about this the baby, girl yeah. and the, you know, yeah. the baby mama. But when she came back and the guy and this young girl was in the house, she was displeased and gave an ultimatum to the guy to let this girl leave the house that particular day or the relationship is off. I think that's a bit of witchcraft. Well, um, I didn't say you did. Yes, yeah, because I'm trying to also put myself um, in the shoes of the child. Okay. Because my mom is not here mm -hmm. and my dad is here, so I kind of need to be with my dad. Okay, so I would have of course, had that school of thought. But that's why I said that sometimes. And today, a lot comes up like that. They might even accept you, but the levels of maltreatment and bias treatment, you know, that goes on in that household, you'll be amazed. Wow. When the man is at home, they treat you differently. When the man is not, you have a different treatment. Okay. These are realities, unfortunately. And statistics are proving that men will accommodate more than women would accommodate. Okay, now let's talk about, you know, men that have kids. How, oh, well, Jesus Christ, that's a lot to handle. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot to handle because I'm, I'm now thinking, so how are, are they now to um, prepare themselves to know that, okay, this person is the right person for me or this person can be the right person to handle my child and I? How, how, like, how do they go through that process? Because obviously there's a lot of pretending most of the time because yeah. everybody wants to get married, yeah. especially women want to get married so badly these days, you yeah. understand? But now, how is a man supposed to know who is the right person for him and that child? Because I'm trying to put myself in the shoe of the father mm -hmm. too. I, I wouldn't want anything to happen to my kid. Yep. See, recently someone shared a story. Um, we went to greet you know, a family that lost, you know, their mother. And when we showed up in the conversation, something came up. There was a discussion about divorce, separation. And so this man divorced the wife. And there's this secretary, they work together in mm -hmm. the office. You know, you know how he sees her every day mm -hmm. looking stunning. And then something happens. And something happens. Mm -hmm. So definitely the way this lady treats him at work thought he thought oh my word if i marry this woman i'm in heaven yes 
you know, and this woman would, you know, come and take this. So the woman has two kids. Okay. This man also has two kids, you know, um, and married. But, you know, as a secretary, sometimes the man and the wife are traveling. Mm -hmm. So they'll say, oh, keep the okay, children yeah, for, yeah. and this woman would take, take good care of them. Care of them. Sometimes take them on holidays. Yeah. They could go, mm -hmm. I mean, wherever, yeah. you know. So he knew that this one the, day yeah. if something should happen and I really want to get married, because my kids love this woman. Yeah. And obviously this is something that I want to have for myself if I decide to. This woman's husband passed. And of course, having two is difficult to find a man. So he sees this man comes into work you know that's the boss he re sorry she reports to so obviously i mean she was being nice doing everything then this man went ahead years down the line divorced the wife mm -hmm. when the divorce came on one year later it took married the, the yeah, secretary. secretary immediately that woman entered the house everything changed everything changed ah everything she changed. became somebody else i'm telling you and you, you see, the fascinating thing about this is there are people who will pretend they really love your kids. They will do things for them that makes you convinced in your absence, they will treat them like their own until they get a very good hold of your house, of your home. You won't, you, you, you won't believe it. This man got you know, fell ill, passed on. A week into the passing on, this woman kicked all the kids out of the house. Now this is, it's too heavy for me to deal with right now. I'm so sorry. I think it's, it's so heavy. There, there are realities in this thing. And please don't get me wrong. I'm in no way saying that women are the only ones who do this. There yeah. are men who do even worse. Yeah. They will maltreat those children physically. They will beat them up, but they will treat their, ki uh, their children better as princes and mm -hmm. princesses. You know, so th there are a lot of complications when it comes to getting into a relationship or a marriage with children. And it's not just you walk in. See, this is what we call blended relationships, mm -hmm. blended families. Yeah. And when those things happen, there are complications that needs to be managed. A lot of pretend happens when you are not in yet. Mm -hmm. You know, but immediately you step foot in there. People want to, you know, really grab and secure and they think of the future they think of the future of their children so they look at the competition across the you know the room and it's like nah if this man passes and my kids are not well secured this kids or his kids or her kids are going to take over so i must do something to eliminate right so would you say it's an african thing because usually most of the times when we talk about blended families and we look um at the west they they kind of like portray more of a happy blended family really? than we portray uh, really? blended families. I'm they're just saying. Worse. Yeah. In the worst, they are worse. See, I don't I don't even know how we get to have the worst deceivers mm -hmm. that they do better at families. They are worse at, at families by all standards. All right. So I'm just going to cut you on that. Let's take a quick break and we will be back to continue this conversation because the studio is heated up right now. So we need to take this break to chill everything now. All right. So you're welcome to Before You Say I Do, and we're having a conversation about entering married with children. And like I said, before we went on the break, the studio is getting heated. Right, Reverend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, because, you know, as we're talking about everything, I'm just, since I told you, like, I'm just going to be the spokesman for women that have children right now. I, like, I, I still have so many questions. And for me, at this point, I'm like, oh, it's, then it's better to wait for the child to grow up or before you delve into marriage. So do you think it's better to actually wait for your kids to grow up, to be a bit independent, before you actually get into another relationship? Um, or are the dynamics or are, or are the dynamics still the same thing, even though the kids are, you know, 
Kids, kids, kids. No, no matter the level they come in, the dynamics could differ. Mm -hmm. I would say when the kids are not very grown mm -hmm. and you bring them in, the possibility of growing together and bonding at a certain level is there. Yeah. When the kids are already grown, mm -hmm. they have formed their life perceptions yeah. and opinions yeah. and their bonds yeah. at a certain age, right. especially when they are teenagers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they, because teenagers have their own exactly. their own life, the way they think, everything is different. So at that point, it becomes rather mm -hmm. complicated. Right. You know, there's a lot you need to manage when they, they're, they're at that age. Emotions exactly. and psych psychology and exactly. everything. And if you're not well prepared for that, um, their reactions can mess up what you have. Sure. And they can speak to it. They know this is not my dad. They know this is not my Don't mom. Don't tell me anything. You're not and my daddy. Exactly. You're not my mommy. You can't tell me you that. You cannot tell me thing. Why are you talking to my daddy <laughs> like that? <laughs> so constantly becomes a battle. But if you go in and they are younger, yeah. they, I mean, the level of submission at the yeah. beginning could be there. Yeah. Which could, if you work your way well, you could win them over right at the beginning, right. bond with them to mm -hmm. grow up, and suddenly... They begin to really see you as the father or the motherly figure you right. are. Right. Do blended families work? In some instances, yeah. yes. In some instances. Anything can work or fail. Yeah. Dependent on the people involved and the conditions they create. Okay. Anything. I, I like the way you say anything can work um, depending on the conditions. Exactly. So that means there is hope for everybody out there with kids. <laughs> We got this. All right, so you talked about, um, you know, anything can work as long as um, it's well taken care of. So now, would you also advise on how one should actually train their kid before getting into, you know, that kind of situation? And, you know, most of the time, you really don't see what's going to happen in the future. Yeah. You really don't predict that, okay, I'm not going to be with your father, I'm not going to be with your mother, mm -hmm. you understand, we're going to be baby mama and baby daddies someday. But would you also say it all depends on how one trains the child? Yeah. It, it contributes a lot. Mm -hmm. See. So what would, the best way to, what would be the best way to train your child? Um, the, what I'm excited about is the element of the training. Mm -hmm. It is very important. See, you're about to go into a setting, they need to understand where they are going into. Mm -hmm. When I send my kids to my mom, so now they go to their grandma, yeah. she's not in the house by herself. There are other kids, there are other people who come around. It is important they understand where they are going into and the kind of life, understanding, and approach to life they must have. Yeah. It's also my way of training my kids to be exposed to the harshness of life. You will meet kids who speak differently from you, mm -hmm. behave differently. Mm -hmm. You will need to learn how to adjust to those realities. You know, those are avenues of bringing a kid into an environment they might not be used to, or a kind of love they might not be used mm -hmm. to. They might be used to your love being also nice and kissing and all that. On the other side, you know, of the lake, there's nothing like that. Mm -hmm. So when you come into such a home, there are a lot of explanations and feedbacks you need to be doing. So there must be a constant breakdown of what you saw. Mm -hmm. Why this? Mm -hmm. You know, so gradually you're helping the child to have that understanding of what they are seeing yeah. and what they are digesting mm -hmm. so that they will not set their life on the wrong premises. Right. Either than that, you will lose them. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that level of engagement with them and they form their own minds to what they see, trust me, it is difficult to get through to them. All right, so but how can a new step parent actually establish um, positive relationships with kids, especially also when it comes to the um, issue of boundaries okay yeah so first the understanding between the parents mm -hmm. is the most critical thing right we must understand and agree on how we raise our children together yeah there is nothing like this is my child that's yours right you know so the languages you know all these things matter all right go and tell your mom mm -hmm. go and tell your dad mm -hmm. no tell your child it, you know this, these yeah. things you know tell your child to do that right you know, it, it, it shouldn't be. 
But these are the, the errors, the mistakes we see daily. By virtue of the, immediately these conversations come and those are your statements. Your statement is actually trying to, you know, um, stamp on the element that you don't belong there, mm -hmm. you belong here. Mm -hmm. So you're already separating them. And at that point, they will begin to see, you know, the situation as this is us, yeah, and that this is, is them. them. You know, so already you are breaking your home. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it will be they against us or us against them. Mm -hmm. You know, so the, the communication must be, you must have that understanding between yourselves first. Then, when there are issues to address, see to ensure that you are addressing it as a family. I say this again, together, family. Let the man who disciplines or the woman who disciplines do it across to all. everybody, yeah. Don't change the tone, don't change the energy when it's on the other side, because kids can see and read through some of these right, things. Right, right, right. So now let's talk about the biological parents. Mm -hmm. hmm. The baby mamas. Yep. And the, and baby, the, baby, and daddies. the baby, baby daddies. Mm -hmm. That they are not involved in the marriage. Mm -hmm. These two people are married now. Mm -hmm. And those ones, always they are always trying to chuck and know what's happening in that house. Mm -hmm. What is your daddy doing? Mm -hmm. So now, how do we handle that dynamic? How does the couple now handle that dynamic when it comes to the biological parents that are not part of this party mm -hmm. yeah so immediately you said they are out there but they're trying to find out what's going on that's yes. already witchcraft to start with it's very important anybody who does that mm -hmm. that is witchcraft because what you're trying to do is to find information that possibly gives you a leeway mm -hmm. to destroy something right or to make some but in fact you're not there why are you interested right why are you actually fixated on that right you know so it is very important anybody who does that is evil right i'm not saying that trying to find out how things, your child is you know, treated no, and stuff like no. that. Yeah. But what, 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 how do they, what, what happens here, what do, do how, those things. How did he treat you, how exactly. did she treat you? Those things, yeah. you know, are totally wrong. Then, when it comes to them coming in, it mm -hmm. is important to establish boundaries. Right. This you must both agree on. Yeah. This is what they can do, this is the extent they can do what, and this is how they can do this. Now, sometimes it becomes complicated. If you brought your, you know, your child, I brought mine. That's my baby mama. The baby mama comes in to take, you know, our child to go do whatever. You know, they go and they leave. You know, you and I exactly. Yeah. At that point, there is a lot of explanation that we need to be given because it could also be vice versa. Mm -hmm. And the explanation we are, we are this part of the training, letting them understand why that is. You know, uh, this person, quest, yeah, mom, mother, and, and, and they, they have need to, to also spend, spend time, time together, and so on and so forth. So that education is important. Either than that, if you leave it at just like okay, you keep saying we are together. Why is it that she comes and don't take us both, and it's just her or him? At the end of the day, you are leaving a lot of unanswered questions in the mind of the child that ultimately will let them feel like they don't belong. So psychologically, you're building a concept in the mind of the child. Yeah, because there are some situations whereby, like, where, let's say where a woman has a child and the man has a child mm -hmm. and they're both in the marriage, there's some situation whereby the woman's um, partner or ex-partner is not in the child's life at, at all. all. So that child will not experience that whole, take me, this person exactly. is coming to take me exactly. there and all that. Exactly. Wow. Those elements can complicate a lot of things. Mm -hmm. They can. And... When they are there, it needs to be managed well. The boundaries need to be set, and the conversations need to be had, mm -hmm. especially when you're back and things changes. Because we know that sometimes someone fetches you to spend time with you, and then the brainwash begin. Yeah. So they come back with different attitudes, attitudes, different you know approaches, mm -hmm. and there are so many things you need to keep managing. See, it's a very difficult situation because you will do all the hard work for three months. They had their child for three hours. And by the time the child returns, trust me, whatever you thought you built yeah. for three years is just reversed, you know, just in three hours. And you wow. need to build again. Wow. So now how should couples actually approach the topics like finances when it comes to maybe a blended family or, you know, an, an extra kid that is not, you know, from the same couple well, when, when you say finances and in like like say finances or maybe school fees and stuff like that okay How, um, do we say okay oh it's your child so take care of your child okay it's my child I'll take care of my child's school fees so once again I will go back to the premise I said earlier 
if your agreement is you are raising a family together, mm -hmm. then it's important that whatever we agree financially applies across of board. Course. If it's not, and the agreement is take care of yours, I'll take care of mine. Or the father of that will yes, take care yes, of. Yes. Those understandings need to be established. Mm -hmm. But it shouldn't be a conversation that the children need to hear. Need to hear. However, mm -hmm. they could possibly know. Why? Yeah, at some point. Because that party is feeding. Yeah, myself, I'm paying your school oh, fees. Yes, I'm yeah. the one who pays your fees. What's that useless guy in yeah. the house? You know? mm -hmm. It complicates a lot. So if you're not explaining that, hey, you are my child, but you also have a biological father. Mm -hmm. I love to do this for you, but your father wants, wants to. to. Yeah. So he will be doing that. I'll be doing this. However, I would make sure that you're safe. I take care of your bills. You stay in this house. You do everything because it's your home. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. like any other child yeah. in this yeah. house. And those are the conversations you need to have. For me, practically, I would like everyone to be friends. Like mother father and baby mama baby daddy they're all friends with the yes. i know it's not possible in the ideal situation yeah in the ideal situation yes. i wish everybody yeah. can be friends that's yeah. the kind of person i am but what advice would you give to anyone that i wouldn't say to a couple that is going through this but to those external people that their baby mamas or their baby daddies are about to say i do ah oh jesus i think i okay yeah see your relationship didn't work. Mm -hmm. Give those that are working on theirs the opportunity to work on themselves, work towards their love relationship. In case you have a baby daddy who found love somewhere else and they're getting married, please, the attention should be on you and it should never be about you. Let someone else have their shine. I think the important thing is that you will find love if you really go out looking for it. But if your focus is to ensure that that you know baby daddy does not find peace or that baby mama does not find love and you will do whatever it takes to destroy it, I think you must understand that every act is a seed. And as long as you are sowing those, it will also be waiting for you. So my advice, really, if someone moves on, let allow them to move on and start working towards you finding yours. I think that is the noble thing to do. Right, and that is Reverend Bernie Osaidua, who is a counselor and a coach. And this discussion has been on entering marriage with a child. There's hope, all right? Everybody work on yourself. There is hope. <laughs> OK, thank you so much, Reverend. Thank you, Chris. H how can people reach out to you? Find me on social media, on Facebook, on TikTok, on Instagram, and on um, um, Twitter, you if find me, it's Benny or Sadia. And please, you can reach me also on WhatsApp. It's 0500 200 944. That's my number. Thank you. All right. And there you have it from um, Reverend. You can reach out to him if you have any questions, if you want some counseling, and he can help you through this journey of walking down the aisle. My name is Chris Carter, and this has been Before You Say I Do. See you on the next episode.